You're listening to Victory Apostolic in Winsboro, Louisiana. Thanks for tuning in. James 2 and 14. James 2 and 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? I'm on this adventure looking to know more about faith in case you don't realize that. I want to know more about having faith. Verse 15, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Here's the key verse right here, and I want you to kind of mark this and pay close attention. Even so, faith, if, if it hath not works is dead being alone. Look at that. Even so faith, everybody say faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. I hope you pray for me tonight because we're jumping out into the deep a little bit. Amen. Verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God. Everybody say believed. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called, watch this, the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I'd like to just preach a simple, well, I say simple, it's a little complex, but I just want to kind of encourage you tonight just simply the thought, work your faith. Anybody need to work your faith? First of all, you got to have faith. And the Bible says that we are all given a measure of faith. A measure. And we don't have to have but a little bit the size of a grain of a mustard seed. So I, I, I want you to take the faith that you got, and I want you to work it tonight. Amen. Would you lift up your hands and say, God bless the word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you for the word. Thank you for our people on this evening. God, I ask the Lord you bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Look at somebody and say, work your faith. Work your faith. God bless you. You may be seated. I'm going to move quickly. Amen. Praise the Lord. James 2 and 14, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? James is talking and illustrating, painting a picture here, how it is not unusual to have faith. Every Christian should have faith. There should not be anybody that claims to be a Christian, a born-again Christian, and not have faith, because it was faith that got you in the door. It was faith that got you to the altar. It was faith that you took the word that was brought forth. And it was faith that you repented of your sins. And it was faith that you uh, received that gift, which was the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And it was faith that you said, put me in that water, and I want to bury away all the sin, all the wrong that I have had in my life. And so 
James illustrates how it's not useful just to have faith, just saying the words. I, I've been guilty myself. Got fa- oh, yeah, I've, I've got faith. And then I'm like, well, ooh, I don't know. Well, I mean, this is a little bit different than what I've ever dealt with. It, James is trying to tell us here that you can't say you have faith. You can't just say the words that you have faith. Everybody today says they're a Christian. But that does not mean that they are Christian. The Bible says that with their lips they will praise me, but with their heart they will be far from me. And so um, James is saying it's not just saying the words, knowing that we should have faith. It's not good enough that we just know about faith and that, oh, man, Peter and Abraham and all these men in the Bible have faith. I'm glad they have faith. It's not good enough that they have faith and we not have faith. It has to be worked. And you don't just give this out. We don't show up and say, look, I got ten of these who would like to have faith. If that be the case, then I think you would be running to the front to get you as much faith as you could get. It has to be worked. When you become a child of God, you're given all of the necessities, all the things that you're equipped with in your life uh, to, to live for God. But that faith alone, God wants to work it. And I'm going to tell you something. The Lord revealed and gave me a revelation of this several weeks ago, but brought it to life just a couple of days ago. And then when things began to surge and happen this course of this week, I said, God, we must have faith. And so faith, the question is, faith in who? Who do you have faith in? The obvious answer, everybody's going to say, Jesus. Do you really have faith in Jesus? What do you have faith in? You have faith in what? Many of you, I think, have faith that you're going to uh, get in your vehicle and arrive back home safely. There's some other people who thought the same thing. I, I, I thought about many of us have the faith that the sun's going to come up in the morning just like it did today. Amen. Faith in who? Faith or what? Faith in His Word. Amen. That faith in His Word is something that's got to be worked. When the Bible said, don't be just a hearer of the Word, it said, be a doer of the Word. It's meaning act out the faith that God put into action through His Word. Amen. And tonight, you, by example, you uh, and you put into motion your faith tonight. You worked your faith tonight by listening to your heart and listening to the voice that said, I've got to get here to Wednesday night Bible study. I've got to get it. I've got to make a push. I've got to make an effort. Amen. You walked in that door by faith. And I hope that you came and you sat down with the faith of, you know what, I can receive something tonight. I, I, I believe something can happen tonight. If we can't, we need to work that faith again. There should not be a service that ever goes by. Wednesday night, Sundays, Tuesday night Bible study, it should never be a service that ever goes by that our faith is not working and being put to the test. God can perform a miracle tonight. If you need healing for your body, shame on us if we're saying, well, it may not happen tonight. Why can't it? Amen. Work your faith tonight. Amen. Put it into play. Put it into action. It, 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 it took, I wonder how many times it took Peter to walk on water. I know it was that one time he got out, but was there ever another time where he had to initiate some type of faith? And we looked through the Bible, and he did demonstrate types of faith, but it worked his faith that initiated that needed faith to perform a miracle to walk on water. And so what good is knowing something if something or someone is suffering and a believer merely wishes them well? I'm really burdened tonight of just, oh, well, we hope everything's all right. We're praying for you. That's not working faith. My faith needs to go a step higher. I'm going to tell you something. On Saturday this past week, my body, I was tired, and we had some things going on. 
and I like to never get out of here. We had five different things going on, it seemed like, and I kept telling my wife, you know, there was even a couple times like, well, we'll just check in. Maybe everything will be all right. But something on the inside of me said, no, you need to go and do as the Scripture said and anoint with oil and put your hand on his head and pray and, and work the faith. Amen. And so as I got in the car and I drove all the way there, I began to focus just simply on God. When I get there, let my faith, let my faith, let my faith. And, and I didn't know what was going to happen, but when we went in there and what happened, happened. He woke up and he began to respond, even though he said, I don't remember anything. His eyes were awake. He grabbed my hand. Something was going on. Work your faith. Amen. Work it. Amen. It will be something that will come from it. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and so rather than helping and saying, oh, it'll be all right. Why can't we take it to the next level and say, I know it's going to be all right because God's word is true. God's word is faithful. I'm not going to put maybes in situations anymore. Well, maybe, you know, I, I, you know, it'll be all right. We'll just hope for the best. No, no. If God said in his word that it can happen, it can happen. If it don't happen, God's word is still not in vain. Amen. His word is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Would you give the Lord a praise? Amen. Come on. If we do not add acts action to our faith our faith grows cold and inert we got to have action that's initiated with our faith amen uh, well, what good is having faith so i believe that sister so-and-so can be healed but if you don't get up and and walk over say i believe god can heal you whatever you just sit there and say well i'll just see if that happens i believe it can happen but god might be saying well you go over there and anoint you go over there and pray for him put your faith to work amen In James 2, it says, 15, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Words are not enough. What can we give somebody? Like today, she was wanting something from me. And what come out, I didn't know what what she wanted to hear what came out was something she needed to hear you know what happened is i worked my faith today i stepped out on faith and began to say some things and she said that's exactly what's going on that i need to hear and i told her i said i'm preaching tonight on that she said oh boy she said i I might get in some big trouble she said if i didn't come my church tonight she said i sure would like to hear that and i said through the mighty, amazing advancement of technology, I said, you'll be able to hear it, and I'll make sure you get that link. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. James and James 2 was talking about words are not enough. What can we give somebody? Just kind words are not enough. Just, just a nice pat on the back is not enough. Uh, me, me and Brother Cameron pulled up at the Dollar General, and, and we got out. He said, there, there's Miss So-and-so. And, 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 and so... We got out, and I don't know. I get, our husband was just sitting in there. He looked like he was just shell-shocked. He was just kind of with his head down. They're going through something with a grandchild. Very serious situation that's going on. And there used to be a time where, like, hey, we're praying for you. Our church has got her on the prayer list. Hope everything's hunky-dory and dandy. Good to see you. God bless you. And walk off. Now, since I've been studying about this, and the Lord's been dealing with put, i got to work my faith. There were people walking around. I didn't know who was in front of me. I didn't know who was on the side of me. But the camera left the door wide open. We walked right over there, and I said, can, I just, can we just pray for you? And we began to lay in and begin to pray, you know. And I looked, and you could see the dad just kind of sitting there, or the granddad just kind of sitting there with his head down. And I had that feeling that I had a few weeks ago in the hospital praying for somebody else. It was like everybody's praying. Here we go again. I really felt that spirit. Oh, boy, here we go again. Everybody's wanting to pray, and I appreciate it, but I'm just, you know, and even though they want prayer, they desire prayer, and they love prayer, but something on the inside of me began to speak out something. I said, I want to pray for you, but you know what? What I really like to do is take your faith with this prayer and my faith, and let's see what can connect right here. Amen. I I, I want to get down to 
putting both together, amen, because something in the Word here is telling me that, that something great comes out of it. And, and so words are not enough. It may be a physical response. It, you, they may need a hug. They may need a helping hand. Amen. Uh, it may be an encouraging word. Amen. What doth it profit is what the word said. James said, what doth it profit? What are we doing around here that's profiting? Amen. Are we worshiping? The Bible said we must worship in spirit and truth. Are we preaching his word? Amen. What doth it profit? What good is it coming on a Wednesday night Bible study if we don't get anything out of it that will work our faith? Sunday... We were back there fixing something, repairing it, and he was stirred up. Sister Francis, he said, man, I was stirred up. Amen. Hey, look, faith was working. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope somebody, I hope I'm not too far over you. Amen. What doth it profit? If you're going to do something for God, let's do something that's going to be profitable. So I'm not going to, what good is it me preaching if I hadn't put any prayer time before? What good is it me preaching this if I hadn't put any uh, fasting or study time? Amen. What, what good is it to go uh, uh, do something for the kingdom of God if we hadn't put any effort behind it in a spiritual sense? You can't receive a blessing, and I've said this until you become a blessing to somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. The two people that said, we want to come help and just offer our time and, and help you, I didn't realize they said, because your daddy... Helped us years ago. And you helped us with a situation that I forgot about. Somebody didn't forget that. Amen. You, you can't just say you love God. You can, but the, the, James said you can't just say it. He said you got to show it. Amen. If you love God, live for him. If you love God, worship him. Amen. If you love God, give to him. If you love God, witness to others. If you love God, pray. Be there. Amen. Support God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I thought about, what is it when they have a show, they have the supporting cast? That's the ones that are always there. The ones you can depend on. The ones that can help the others that just kind of come and go a little bit. They're the main characters. I'm thankful tonight on this Wednesday we got our supporting cast and our lead director is Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some people only get involved at certain times. Hey, it's the season for some to get involved and get in the house of God, but it's also a season where it's like, oh, now we got school and stuff, you know. It's going to be hard to go on Wednesday nights and it's kind of hard and difficult, you know, to do that. So they become seasonal and bail out. But James said, no, 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 no. If you say you love God, keep his commandments. Be there. Be accounted for. Show up. Amen. Some people only get involved when there's a problem in the church. That's the only time they show up. Some people only get vocal when there's something they don't like. Amen. But the scripture says, what doth it profit? Some people, some people go to church to cause trouble. But James said, what doth it profit? Amen. What are you here to profit? Yourself? Amen. Just as there's people working for God, believe it or not, there's people working for the devil. And the bad thing about it, they don't even realize what they're doing. Amen. It's amazing when someone don't like something, they leave the church or change churches. I used to be over things in the church, physical things. But now it's spiritual things. Used to be they get mad over this and over that or something. Then go, I didn't, I didn't get to sing or I didn't get to play or I didn't get to do this. And, and, and now that used to be a physical thing and, and, and they, they get upset about it. But now it's a spiritual thing. Now we're hearing things like, man, he preaches too hard. I had to get out of there. I don't want him stepping on my toes all the time, you know. I'm, I'm gonna get, you know. So it's a physical thing and it's a spiritual thing. But he said, what profit? What, what doth it profit? Amen. Praise the Lord. You give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. It requires work. Putting into motion your faith. He said in verse 17, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. It's dead. Look, I don't care how much work you do for the kingdom of God. Thank you for cleaning, cooking, 
doing all the things you do. But if you don't have faith in God, if you can't have faith that God's going to build this church or God's going to send revival, or if you can't have faith in his word that you can be healed, if you don't have faith your family can walk, you're wasting all your time cleaning, cooking, doing all the things. He said it will not work alone. Even so, faith it hath not works as dead being alone. It, so when I'm preaching, I'm looking for faith. I am researching. I'm studying. I'm journeying on faith. I'm trying to, Lord, how can I have more faith? And he said, you got to do both. Praise the Lord. Faith is a belief and a trust in his word. That's what faith is. Do you trust his word? Okay, we say that. James said we say it. But do we believe it? Do you believe his word is true? Do you believe that he created this world? you believe that he created you? In his own image, you believe if he created this world and put it into existence, that he can solve your problems and fix your circumstances? Do you believe it? He said, we say it, but can we believe it? Hallelujah. Amen. It requires work, putting it into motion. Faith is belief and trust is word. It's dead if we don't work it. What good is reading scriptures? What good is these young people reading, reading a poem? What good is it singing a song? If you don't believe in what it is you're singing about. Amen. There's power in the blood. Is it? Amen. There's joy in the Holy Ghost. Is it? Thank God I am free. Are you? Amen. Faith without works is dead. Now, my grandpa, he always said, you're either a fruit producing or you're a fruit rotting. The one on the tree is going to keep growing. The one rod is going to fall off the tree. I've seen a lot of people fall off. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we are to be fruitful. Amen. We should be growing. And it should take a long time to grow. God is a creator. God is a season changer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where is our faith and our works together? Praise the Lord. i got to move quickly. Faith is belief and trust is word. Put into action what we believe or what God says do. You know what faith is? is doing what God said to do. When you believe in something, you live it. I don't know how y'all do that. I don't know how y'all sit in there two hours. I don't know how y'all live like that. I don't know how y'all do it. Because I have faith in God. Praise the Lord. James 2. Look at James 2 and 18 real quick. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. And I have works, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. Working your faith is believing who he is. I tell people every time I teach Bible study, the first thing you need to come to realization or to conclusion is the fact that he is the creator. Amen. you got to believe who he is. And you got to... You, you got to make that, that mark that he is one God. What's interesting is that he is one God, the only God. The devil believes and trembles. The devil even knows that he's one God. Sometimes the devil will work our faith. He'll work on our faith. He'll test our faith, don't he? Job lost his health, lost his family, his friends, lost his wealth. But his faith stayed together. But I want to look at Job. He had to work that faith. You didn't just wake up one day and there it was. It's something that didn't happen overnight. Or during his trial when everything was happening. He worked on it day and night prior to before he got into all of the, the riffraff of the devil. The Bible says he worshiped, he sacrificed, he praised, he trusted God. Matter of fact, he did praise for his children. He laid a sacrifice for all of his children before uh, uh, and before he every day he would give a sacrifice to praise and, and honor. He'd say, God, bless my children, bless my children, bless my children. And he would offer a sacrifice and he would do a praise offering for his children. That's what the Bible said. And you know what happened? Then he lost his children. That ought to snag somebody and, and pull the carpet out from under, the rug out from under you. And, and totally annihilate your faith. But he kept trusting God. You know why? Because previously he had worked on that faith. He had built a type of faith that wouldn't fall apart at the first storm. 
20. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When he had ordered or, or offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Watch this. Abraham was a worker of faith. Abraham was a man of faith. He was the father of faith. He worked his faith. He put it to work. Working faith. His faith was put to the test. I want to show you something. His faith required work. His faith required praise. His faith required offering a sacrifice. His faith required climbing up the mountain to offer a sacrifice. Now, we, we, we don't talk about that a lot. I don't hear too many preachers preach about that. Because when they say he went to offer a sacrifice unto the Lord, we think, well, he just stepped out the back door, grabbed a few pieces of wood, and built a fire, and grabbed a, 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 a lamb. But that wasn't his place where he offered. That, that wasn't where his altar was. Well, let me rephrase that. That wasn't where God's altar was that he wanted him to sacrifice on. See, the world's making altars wherever they want to today. And God is saying, no, 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 no. I want you to offer a sacrifice on this altar. But you got to go up there to do it. I don't see why we got to do all that. You mean y'all have to do it that way? I mean, that's the hard way, you know. I, I, that blah, 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 blah. But that's what God said to do. That's what he said to do. And, and so he had to climb the mountain. It was work. Some people are like, I ain't going with you. That's work there. You ever heard somebody say that? I'm not going to do that. That's work. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to put me in on this, boy, and I'm going to be working. I'm going to be. Sacrifice was work. Building an altar. Look, building an altar was work. Altars are, are, are walked to in this time. They were climbed to. They were hard to get to. And so he would make that effort and, and go to that altar. It was difficult. It was a long walk. He had to carry the animal that he was sacrificing alive. He had to carry the wood. Think about this. I'm going to worship God. I'm going to the altar. But I got to carry the wood, carry the live animal and I'm going up the mountain. Now, that's difficult. That, you don't think that's tough? Just imagine a feeble old man, Abraham. But he'd done it many times. There's a key right there. When you've done it and done it and done it several times, it just becomes like old hat is what Papa said. Amen. It don't bother you. I just, this is the way it's, it's always done. And it work, what works is what I, what's good enough. That's what God is. It's worked with God. That's what God has always used. And so I'm going to keep doing what works. Amen. And so he would get the animal. It was alive. He'd carry the wood. And that animal would fight. It was a struggle. Because that animal was on his back trying to get loose. Here he is carrying wood climbing the, the mountain, struggling with the animal that's trying to get away. And, and that's what a lot of people, they, they're like, well, I'm tired of this. I'll just kill the animal. It'll be easier to tow it up there. But that's not what God said do. You're taking something out of his word. And so killing an animal, he had to go up there and have everything with him to, to, uh, to, to keep clean the animal. You had to kill it. And clean it, put the blood up on the altar. So when you got up there, you killed the animal, cleaned it, put the blood up on the altar, and then you offered it to God the way that God intended, and you, you, you set it afire. In verse 22, see us how faith wrought. Deeply stirred and excited is what wrought means. So I'm going back to James. He says, see us how faith wrought. Deeply stirred and excited with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Now, understand what's going on here. Every time he went up there, he knew something was going to happen. Because that's the way faith is with your works. Well, I really hope that I can get this out like the Lord has given it to me tonight. Amen. Because don't you think for a moment, I know Isaac was with him this time. Isaac, you're going with me. Okay, Dad. That wasn't a big deal. He normally did that. 
it's good to have the boys along every now and then because I can help. You can help me carry this. You can pack this. You know. So it was good to have Brother Isaac with. Come on, Isaac, carry the wood for me. Ooh, I won't have to carry the wood this time. Come on, Isaac, carry carry the animal with me. He just throw it on his shoulder, big tough. You know, youth there, youth brute there, and walk up the mountain, just go up the mountain with him. But this time, it was different. Every time we went up, even with Isaac, it's like, boy, something good is fixing to happen. Because you know what? Every time we praise God, he had the faith that I know it's a climb. I know it's a walk. I know we had to get that lamb that you love. I know I know we got to get all the wood and we got to haul it up there. But you know as well as I do, Isaac, that every time we offer a sacrifice and worship and praise God, he does something. Amen. He, do, he blesses. Amen. I wonder if we could have that kind of faith with works. As we come to the altar, we work hard enough to get to church. We work hard enough to worship in church. We work hard enough at the end to walk to the altars. And I know we're tired in body and we got to go somewhere tomorrow and work. But can we have enough faith, Lord? If I can just apply the work with the faith here, you're going to heal my body. You're going to save my family. You're going to give me a job promotion. You're going you're to put food on the table. You're going to do the impossible because I'm telling you, I, I work your faith. I'm working my faith. Come on, come on. Uh, he, he, and he knew that something was different. And Isaac knew something was different this time because it's like, Daddy, yeah, did you forget something? Nope. And they kept climbing up the mountain. You sure? Because I usually tote that thing that, eh. Nope, nope, not this time. How did he know that? He had already been working faith in his life. God spoke to him and told him not to bring it. Some people's got this all wrong, too. Well, God just told him not to take it up there. And No, working faith. Abraham said, look in the Bible. He said, Daddy, where's the sacrifice? God will provide. I guess what I'm trying to preach tonight is God will provide. If you'll work your faith. And you'll put your faith into action. And we question, like, how is this going to work out? God will provide. God will provide. I spent been the story of my life the past few months. God will provide. God will make a way. God will provide. And then he got up there and he's like, okay, Daddy, where's it at? Well, son, God said that you're going to be the sacrifice. What? Now, he's a young man. He's still learning here. He climbs up there and they strap him down. And in his mind, it's like, oh, boy, this is it. I can't believe this is the end. Everybody's like, what about Brother Abraham? Well, remember, he's the guy that's worked his faith all this time. In his mind, he's saying, God will provide. God will provide. God will provide. He's about to kill his son, but in his faith is saying, his flesh is saying, yep, you done it this time. It's over. That son you've been wanting all this time, look what God's done. He's fixing to take him away from But something on the inside that was working his faith kept saying, no, 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 no. God wouldn't bring me up this mountain. He wouldn't bring me this far. He wouldn't do this to me. God will provide. He will provide a sacrifice. Show me a person that's willing to work. Clean, get dirty, help out, pick up the trash, clean the bathroom, not complain or expect somebody else to do it. And I'll show you a person that's working their faith and their spiritual. I mean it. Hallelujah. Wait a minute, Brother David. I play and I sing. I teach a class. I pay my tithes. I give mission. You know, I brought a casserole to the youth night. Uh, I, I give the most candy. The candy rain last time. But God said, I'm not looking for that kind of work. Matthew 9, 38, I'm moving quickly, I promise. Matthew 9, 38, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth, here it is, here it is, the laborers into his harvest. A laborer is a worker. Jesus knew that people would not work. I'm speaking about working our faith. How do I work my faith? Seek, knock, pray, fast, worship, believe, praise, give. One thing that I can't stand is someone uh, uh, that wants somebody else to do something. 
Uh, one thing that I just, I just really have a problem with is trying to pay somebody to do something that we can do ourselves, amen? If I don't know how to do it or if I don't have the equipment, that's different. I like to do things myself because Jesus said he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You want a blessing? My dad, my dad used to tell preachers, I guess that's why we don't have very many ministers in the house because he used to tell young preachers, they'd come all the time wanting to preach, and they said, well, what do I do? How do I get started? Daddy said, clean the toilet. I know some other preachers that did the same thing. He said, they didn't last no time. I like to do things. For the kingdom of God physically but spiritually. 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We must do things together. We are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Paul, what, he, what is he saying here? Paul is declaring that leaders are co-workers they be, who belong to God. And we as the church work with our leaders. And we, as the, he said, as the church, you let the the, the ministers, let them lead. Working That's working your faith when you let them lead because they can obey the voice of God. I don't have time to go into this, but Saul had enough. He said, I'm tired uh, of Brother Samuel all the time. We're having to wait on him. I'm tired of Brother Samuel having to wait to him preach for us to do something. He said, we can go win wars. I'm a warrior. I'm a fighter. I can do this on my own. And what happened? He ended up dying on the battlefield. Amen, because he disobeyed God. But we are the church. Now, the church that Paul was talking about here, we're the transitional church. Now, that don't mean we change doctrine now. He's talking about from agriculture imagery to architectural imagery. He used things. He used farmers in the Bible because they could relate to That's what they did. He declared that the Corinthians were both the field and the building which belonged to God. 1 Timothy 5 and 18, For the Scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. You get reward when you work for the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Our faith is the process. God, His Word, the pastor, the church, each other, the husbandry, His timing, due season, if we faint not, He said. Give up, complain, criticize you, you miss out on the harvest. Amen. You miss out on the harvest. James 2 and 23, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God. Watch this right here. And the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and he was imputed. That word means responsible to him for righteousness. And he was called, what did it say? The friend of God. By faith our works and faith our righteousness his word. James is pointing out the moment when God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his only son Isaac. He said, I'm rewarding him, I'm blessing him, I'm saving his son because he has showed great faith. <coughs> Would you stay in tonight? The moment we obey him. The moment we obey his word like Abraham. The moment we praise and sacrifice and worship like Abraham, he rewards us. He blesses us. He saves us. The friend of God is an important phrase. Go throughout the Bible. There were not too many people that God referred to as the friend of God. He referred to them as his children and his brother. He even referred to David as the apple of his eye. Those were great compliments. That was rewarding compliments, distinguishing the fact that, boy, you are really in my presence. You're really close to me. I had this uh, uh, teacher that come up to me a while back, and he had a nickname, and I can't remember exactly, some funny nickname. And uh, this lady found out his nickname, and... Uh, and come up and called him that nickname. And he just kind of looked at it and he come over to me and he said, you don't call me that unless you know me. <laughs> you better really know me before you can call me that. You got to have that kind of, you know, relationship with me before you can just call me that. And I thought about God don't just call everybody a friend of God. But it was his faith and his works that initiated 
God to want to call him the friend of God. You see, it says you, in verse 24, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I'm telling somebody to work your faith tonight. If you work your faith, it will work for you. Would you lift up your hands? And I, and I want you to think of something that you're praying about. I want to think, it may be for you, it may be for somebody else. I want you to pray that prayer. And I want you to have faith and believe that God can answer that prayer. But it's going to take some work on your part. You acknowledge the fact that God can and, and He will do it because He's able and He's God. But it's going to be on your part that you sacrifice some time of thanks, some time of praise, some time of getting in that word and saying, God, I'm just believing like Abraham. I'm going to believe what your word said, and I'm going to activate. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to get in that word. I'm going to get in that prayer room. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to put it together because it don't work alone. What doth it profit? I'll tell you what it will. Work that faith, and let's see what God give him the glory in the name of Jesus right now. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We pray that it blessed you. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel or submit some positive feedback on your favorite podcast app and share it with a friend. God bless in Jesus' name.